Hi there, and welcome to Assembly TV 2011. This is the first Compo Studio that we have. Compo Studios happen straight after the main game competitions, the main demo competitions, and any other events that are on uh, Assembly TV first. So what we do here is we discuss the competition that you've just seen live on Assembly TV. So we've just seen the game development competition, and there have been 16 entries, and to discuss them with me, I have uh, two compadres in the studio. First of all, I have uh, Mikko Rautio, also known as Waffle. Some of you may know me as Dot Waffle, but this is Waffle. <laughs> hi, uh, hi, Waffle, how are you doing? No, I'm fine, a little bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's very late and nice, yes. isn't it? So, uh, and also, we have uh, uh, somebody I've not previously met before inside of Assembly TV. Your name is Vila, is that correct? Yes. And uh, 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 you've been coming to Assembly for quite a while, and then you've got a game design t shirt. Yes, so I'm plugging my own website. You're plugging your own website, yes. okay. I think we'll allow that, that should be fine. Um, so we've got Game Dev. Um, it's a strange com uh, concept in that people make um, essentially small games for the demo scene audience that. Um, they're typically very, very, very small in size. They're, they're, they t typically stay to one concept, and they're released for free before the the party, so that people can play them before the actual event starts. So, whereas, uh, for instance, we have a 4K, which you see at the competition, and then you only have a few hours to vote on it. This you have uh, several hours, several days, in fact, to play it beforehand. Um, now, I know you, Villa, have, have previously entered the game dev competition. Um, for, for you, what do you, what do you think about the game dev competition compared to, say, just releasing it on, on some kind of store or something? Uh, well, I think the audience is cer certainly different mm. right here in Assembly than, say, when, when you pu put your game in a box and put it on, put it on a sel shelf on a, on a store. But other than that, the games are the same. We have a, lo a lot of gamers right here. Mm -hmm. And um, I think these gamers know exactly what they want. They play a lot of games. They are mostly hardcore gamers. And um, yeah. So I, I, I imagine it must be really nerve wracking. If, if you're releasing a game just on the internet, you will typically not hear back from anybody, or if they do, they'll be with a bug or I love your game. Here, you actually have 5,000, 6,000 people immediately going boo or, going or applauding straight away if they really like something. Is that a different atmosphere to be in? Is it, is it something that you enjoy? Or? Uh, well, yes, it's, it's always nice to get the, the feedback immediately. Mm. And of course, um, if, they like, if they like your game a lot, uh, they will definitely show it. Yeah, but it's not the, uh, uh, the same the other way around. If they don't like it, they just might be completely silent. So you can't really say if they if they uh, despise your game yeah. or they just barely to tolerate it. But if they do like it, they will let you know. Okay, so so enough of the grilling of the personal life now. Um, we have just seen 16 entries, and um, my opinion, and I don't normally give my opinion on here, is that. 16 was too many. I don't know what you two thought about that. Uh, in that there, there seemed to be some, some games there that um, one heck of a lot of effort had been put in and it, it were very professionally designed and then some that... I, I, now, I know you're going to, to really go at me when I say this, but th there was one in particular, the Unicorn game, where <laughs> it was a bit... Uh, how, how do I put this nicely? It, it was a bit lacking in some regards. But it, it was made in C++. It was made in <laughs> C++, yeah. No, none of this newfangled basic language or anything. Um, so I, I, if we just go, go, go through a few of my favourites, maybe you guys want to add as, as well. Um, there was a game which um, perhaps you, you may be familiar with, a game called Thrust back in the 80s, or, or maybe R, R3 or anything like that. It was a, a rocketry game where you had to fly around a, a set course and and choose of the people that could have actually explained about three or four of those games, but I think I think it was the third or fourth fourth through. Um, a lot of these seem to be small small sprites that go and shoot things. Um, what are your opinions of those kind of games? Is it something that you're? Uh, well, uh, w w w when it comes to the uh, competition, I would much rather prefer original games yeah. than just well say. Well, m most of what we saw just now. So, um, yeah. 
uh, well, yes, you could have definitely um, dropped some games from the final. Absolutely. Yeah, there were quite a lot of those um, space shooter games that, uh, well, I, I, I personally like to play those kind mm. of games at home, but when I'm watching 16 entries and like four of them are somehow related to space shooting with no no original concept or anything it uh, comes plain boring rather quickly yes yeah, so it's, it's like you've, you've already seen this game so yeah. what's new yeah so you've both said something which i was really hoping you're going to which is that originality was lacking in this but yeah. there were a couple of games that Don't both of you pricked up game. with <laughs> well uh, so in, in in britain we call it a lathe i believe in america oh. they call it a router uh, you're going to have to remind me of the name because it, it was Sorvi. Sorvi. Okay. Um, it's an original concept. I don't know about you two. Uh, maybe it's it's taken from a couple of other things. But what, what, Waffle, what was your your kind of impression of that game? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't play play it, but it was a nice crowd pleaser because uh, well, actually, it had had a nice concept of the that you have to um, uh, shape the objects by using the lathe mm -hmm. and. Uh, and you have these uh, lines over the screen and you just have to shape the objects and it was it looked very fun to watch but i don't know it probably comes very boring after five minutes of to, playing. to watch <laughs> once i mean uh, the, the game i'm thinking of in particular uh, i don't know if you remember from a few years ago um boris torvat and reka torvat mm. yeah this month series yeah, yeah. Uh, it, and they were both by tart i believe yeah. so it's that kind of one trick pony game as I call yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a fun, fun game and, and yeah. uh, what's really, what, what, what I really like about it, it brings me back to I think fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember ever using a lightsaber to carve or no, the later wood. That was original, let's put it that way. <laughs> Maybe it was or there some, somewhere <laughs> in the classroom, but I don't, I don't remember seeing. Okay. Um, so other games that I particularly remember, um, I don't know why I remember this game because I really didn't like it. Um, the what I'm going to call Run Spot Run, the the dog. Or the the, in the Crash cloud. Bandicoot. Y yes. Clone that thing. kind yes. of that kind of game. Um, there were a lot made. I mean, this one in particular, I remember. Uh, now, some people would say Kajak, some people would say Kayak, some people would say whatever. Um, supposedly. I've been told this is some kind of new 3D game engine that's been released or something, as well as some kind of company that's trying to promote it. Um, I was wondering what you, you thought about engines in general. When somebody uses an engine, does that sacrifice their creativity, or could it be a, a, a valuable asset? I was just wondering what you both thought on that. Well, in my opinion, uh uh, use the better, best equipment that you can use, and if you have a nice idea, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I think it's a perfectly valid to use uh, uh, code it yourself or use others engines or just some game maker tools. If if you can make the concept with the given tools, then do it. <laughs> and for the for the gamer, it's all the same. Yeah. Mm. They care about the end result. Yeah. So who cares? What 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 engine you use? Yeah, okay. If it's an enjoyable game, then the players will like it. So I'm going to, to, to leave out my next question, which was the other one that I particularly liked. Uh, were there any particular favorites that, that you two had? I'll look at Villa first. Was, was there a particular favorite game that, that really kind of sparked something? Yeah, I think Sort of Hero was the most original game and, it, and the one that stood out from the rest. Okay. I mean, in particular, that, that one seems to have a bit of a um, crowd-pleasing factor, let's yeah. put it that way. Well, yeah, there was the li Linux penguin there and uh, yeah. lightsabers. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> a very <laughs> red-eyed li Linux penguin, I must yeah. say. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think. What, what was the name of the last entry? Uh, Ooh, uh, oh, this is terrible because oh, normally it, it we was have... the, the NetHack-like oh, no, ro roguelike game. The one before that. Oh. Because I, I thought it was going to finish at 14 games. Oh, I'd been always been told 14, so when there were 16, it was a bit, yeah. uh, it was a bit strange. <laughs> um, of course, now we're going to look very silly on TV because we don't have the sheet in front of us. Yeah. But uh, was there anything in particular you that stood out for you? Well, I think the, uh, I think the most stood out game was uh, the Bellhopper game made to Atari 
2600, mm -hmm. which says hopefully the guys in Satuma don't beat me after <laughs> saying this, but I think it's the first game console that was actually programmable. Okay. So it's, it was a nice ac a technical ac achievement as well. So, so we, we all sat down during the compo. The one, um, my, when I was about 10, 12, I went down to a local um, village fete, you know, car boot sale type thing. And for 20 pence, 20 English pence, I got a controller that was a, uh, a, a rotary wheel so you could control the puck on the screen. I believe that was the same because you couldn't have done that with a keyboard. Surely that was a very much a, a rotary yeah, control. I'm, I'm, well. I'm not sure what yeah. kind of controls it had. But it was it was um, a bit samey, I think yeah. is is the word to do it. But it's yeah. an Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah. What can you uh, what can you get out of it? Yeah, you you always get bonus points for using Amiga or Atari <laughs> <laughs> in the game of Gone Absolutely. Absolutely, and and quite a few entries I noticed uh, that weren't just available on, on, on PC, Mac, Linux. It was also on mobile phones as well. Yeah. Uh, do you guys call them mobile phones or cell phones? I, I never know with the Finnish market. Oh. Yeah, whatever. But um, uh, so for instance, we saw entries for the Nokia uh, N900, for Windows Phone 7, for Android. Um, when you two personally play games at home, and I don't mean full 3D blasters or anything, if you're just playing a, 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 a small game, would you prefer to play them in a in a web browser, on a mobile phone, how do you tend to play games? Well, la latest game that I have been addicted to was um, from this uh, company I won't call that is sponsoring Assembly and they have a very mean birds in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. And that's on a, uh, that's on, on, on iPhone? On, yeah, I use it on my N900. Oh, right, okay. And yourself? Well. I prefer to play games with clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, I'll, I'll take that as read. Okay, well that's brilliant. Um, has anyone got anything uh, final to say about the compo? I mean, for, for, for me, 16 games, like I say, seem to have been too much. Um, generally, there were a couple of games that stood out, but for the most part, it was a little lacking. Um, and I will have a few people shaking fists at me now as I go around, as there always are. So, anything you wish to add? Well, I have to uh, say something about the Tetris clone <laughs> game because the, uh, it was it was incredible that someone actually managed to do a Tetris clone that ha had like stopped every every bonus point you ever will have in <laughs> in one single game, and I, I, I was I was uh, it was only lacking that the game would have been also made for a toaster or it would have been with microwave yeah. wave oven or something. It was. It was weird <laughs> for okay. a Tetris. But uh, uh, f from what I saw normally on a Tetris clone, when you clear a line, you clear a line. This yeah. left in the blocks. Which, uh, it, um, it cleared the lines, in my opinion. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. It, it cleared the colours. Then the, oh. the frames of the boxes stayed there and the birds came out into the side. Oh. So it seemed to put in an extra layer of complexity, which would have infuriated me. <laughs> 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 Anything else you wish to add? Uh, well, no. No. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Well, uh, so that's about it from the, um, uh, from the Game Dev Compo Studio, which we're going to leave it at that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll come back to Assembly TV programming. Uh, the next uh, thing on the big screen, next demo compo, will be the Fast Music Compo, which is on at 15.30, finish time uh, tomorrow. That's Friday. Up until then, we'll uh, leave you to it. And uh, I've been Matthew Walster for Assembly TV. Thank you very much.